imperfectly executed, but present. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Great to be together with you. We all love free stuff, don't we? Uh, Prizes and rewards. Maybe you have a certain credit card that you're part of and you get points. Uh, For me, I love Starbucks coffee and I always got to scan my phone to get my stars before I pay for my coffee. Uh, How many of you like roll up the rim? That's a thing, right? Tim Hortons. And right now, McDonald's. I'm not a big McDonald's guy, but they have this double play thing. So you buy your cheeseburger and then you might get a prize from the cheeseburger, but then you can go on the app and get another prize. Well, that's pretty cool. It's like, okay, I'm not a big McDonald's guy, but that's, I think I might go and go there a few more times because I want free stuff. And I'm like, why? I was thinking to myself, why do we, why are we like this? So I kind of looked it up and there's a reward system in our brains. Two things drive human actions. Uh, Necessities like food and sleep, the avoidance of pain and rewards. Any object, any event, any activity can be a reward if it motivates us, causes us to learn, or elicits uh, good feelings. Our our brains compute the value of reward and then translate it into action. And we have this reward system in our brains where neurons in different regions communicate with each other and they use dopamine, this thing called dopamine in our, our brains. And that motivates us and our behavior. They release dopamine and, and we expect to receive a reward. It enhances, this dopamine enhances reward-related memories and also creates emotional associations with rewards. It's not the reward itself, but the expectation of the reward that most powerfully influences emotional reactions and memories. Reward learning occurs when we experience something unexpected, when the actual rewards differ from what we otherwise would predict. If the reward is greater than anticipated, dopamine signaling increases. So we're going to try a little experiment with this right now. So you came into church today and you got a little ticket. Uh, for a door prize, so get your numbers out, and we're going to do our best. We've got a little gift here for you. So this is a fun thing for you to enjoy on Thanksgiving with some friends, or maybe by yourself. Uh, so I'll put that there, and uh, we got some numbers here. I'm going to stir it around a little bit. Okay, yeah, a little drum roll, drum roll. <laughs> okay, here we go, 14170. Dash one one eight. Hey, we have a winner. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. How did that feel? Did you all feel the dopamine surging? Yeah, that felt good. And I'm sorry I don't have enough for everyone. Um, more? <laughs> I got ca- candy here. Candy. But this is for the children. Please think of the children. So kids, kids are in church today. And uh, you see this little Sour Patch guy on the front. He's smiling at you. And you can have a little taste of him later. Kids and some chocolate. This is my favorite. I love Coffee Crisp and Kit Kat. But the reward, children, is for after the service of mom and dad or whoever you came to church with, say you can come and grab some, okay? So you have to wait. And I'll just leave it there to tease you, okay? And let the dopamine flow. (laughs) There's an expected reward. And uh, some of you big kids, you can have some because we have lots left over. So you can enjoy some too. So these are just earthly rewards, but we get excited. We get excited and this stuff's firing around in our brains, isn't it? What if the reward system that's in us is actually for lasting and bigger rewards, not just for these things, although they're fun and they're good, What if there's a bigger reward that we're supposed to anticipate, bigger rewards that we're supposed to have and look forward to? What if our brain, this reward system, is actually meant to help us get through the trials and the tough things of life? I think we need fuel, we need motivation, we need hope and strength to keep going, to keep going and to believe that there's a better future ahead of us. James takes this moment in this one verse that we're going to look at today to give us this kind of encouraging insight. Let's look at it from James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial 
because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. I think James wants us to know that there are rewards for the perseverance that we go through. He's looking at two kinds of rewards. The blessed, that we're going to talk about in a moment, is a now kind of reward. And he's looking at rewards in the future. He is linking these two kinds of rewards with a character quality called perseverance. It's something that God wants to grow in each of us. And we talked about this a few weeks ago. And in this first section of James, he's talking about all the trials, the trials of many kinds that we face, and then how to go through them with God's help, God's direction, God's wisdom. So we want to become mature. We want to have wisdom. And as Pastor Rob talked to us about last week, we want to brag in the right way. We want to focus on the priorities that God has for each of us. And so this Greek word for perseverance is hypomone. We don't say that very often. But I kind of like saying it out loud like that, hypomone. And it's perseverance. And this perseverance, this hypomone grows in us as it faces resistance, like a muscle in our bodies. It, those only grow if they face resistance. And that's what this uh, character quality is in us and what God wants to develop in us as we face trials of many kinds that James talks to us about in chapter 1 here. Hypomone, perseverance. But I want you to know that there's actually rewards. In this verse, God is promising rewards for going through the resistance of the hypomone. And our brain is wired for this. And not just our brain, our whole beings need motivation from God. It's great that it's in our brain, and that's pretty cool, but there's more. And I want you to know today that you can experience strength for today and a bright hope for tomorrow through the rewards that God gives. You see, God our Father has a reward system, and we're made to pursue the rewards of the Lord, to pursue the, the rewards of the kingdom of God. And these rewards aren't the same as the rewards that the world offers to us. And so often, we just follow Jesus. And and often, we just follow out of duty. And we grit our teeth and we grind it out to serve him. But what if there's more incentive than that? What if there's more incentive, more inspiration, more draw, more motivation to be pursuing the rewards of the Lord in the now and in the future? You, think I, I, you see, I think we're made to set our minds on the rewards of Jesus. To stand with strength now and hope to be rewarded in the future. You see, our God redeems the now and he rules the future. That's good news. So let's start with reward number one, being the blessed now. The idea or theme of being blessed or blessed is found through the Bible all throughout. And it basically means the good life. Throughout the Old Testament, especially in Deuteronomy, we see Moses standing on the mountain and he talks about the cursings and the blessings and he pronounces them over the people. And there's a conditional nature to receive the blessings that Moses is talking about. And if we fast forward to Jesus, he is standing on the mountain in the Sermon on the Mount and he's talking about the blessings of God as well, the good life, the blessed life of God for people. And particularly in the Sermon on the Mount, he starts it with what we call the Beatitudes today. And he's basically talking about who has access to the good life of God. Who is it? Is it the attractive, the slim, the powerful, the rich, the prosperous? No, it's everyone. Listen to this from Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. 
Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So this idea of blessed, the Greek word is makarios, and James, in our passage today, uses it very intentionally to draw our attention back to Moses and draw our attention back to Jesus. The blessings that Moses talked about, and then the grace of the blessedness of Jesus. The good life, friends, the good life is defined by God and Jesus and no one and nothing else. Through the obedience and grace of Jesus Christ, the blessed identity is available to everyone all of the time. It's through Jesus, his lordship, and his actions for us that the good life comes. You see, the kingdom of God is here now, and that is the true good life. The good life is not defined by people or the cultures of people or by the devil and his demons. And we have to go up against this all the time because there's so many messages of what the good life actually is. But Jesus is clear and James is calling us to attention on that today. He's letting us know what blessed the good life is even as we stand up in the trials and we grow perseverance in our lives. You see, the Old Testament blessedness was conditional on obedience. But the blessedness of Jesus is that you and I, we failed to live up to the conditions. So the only condition for us is surrender. To surrender to the lordship of Jesus, to entrust yourself to him. The good news of Jesus is that we can whisper or groan for Christ. And because of how he has obeyed the Father and what he has done, and how he has gone through it, then all of the blessings of Christ shower down on us now. That's amazing. And I don't know about you, but so often we see ourselves in tough things as cursed. But Jesus calls us blessed. And through the cross, he has taken the curses that have come to us and taken them onto himself. Friends, our identity is the blessed, the blessed. Now, do you believe that today? You see, we cry, we mourn, we moan, we're weak, we're broken, we're happy, we're excited, we're thankful, and we're blessed of God now. That's wonderful to hear. This is the reward for being the people of God. All are invited into the good life of Jesus because the kingdom of God is here now, and the only condition is surrender. And it's greater than any kingdom of humans or the devil and his demons. And just an aside here as well. We go through a lot of hard things. But we can actually experience a deep freedom in the life that we have today. Because of what Jesus has done. I was having uh, coffee with a guy a few weeks ago. and, And he was excited about his faith journey and where he's going in his life with God. He's like, but I have all the shame and guilt from my past that I can never shake loose of. And right away, inside of me, something I think from the Holy Spirit was like, that's not true. Today, you can be free of shame and the guilt that you're carrying from your past because you can activate the forgiveness and the power of Christ in your life. And it can be released. You can go to something like Encounter God and experience deep freedom. And so he signed up, which is awesome. Friends, there's stuff that you're carrying right now that you don't need to carry anymore. You're persevering. You're going through trials, but you can release it in Jesus' name. There's darkness and oppression and accusation that you don't have to live with anymore because of what Christ has done for you, and you can activate that power in your life today or come to encounter God and enjoy and experience deeper freedom. That's part of the blessedness. Fear, anger, anxiety, the effects of trauma being lifted off of you even in the here and now. That's the blessedness of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but so often I feel invisible or alone in my pain. But there's light. There's the shining of the face of God on us now. The presence, the power, the comfort, the grace, the healing, the help, and the miraculous intervention. I think we're supposed to call on and experience this blessedness now. And I'm not promising that it's going to change all kinds of things 
It may not change your situation or change your circumstance, but it can change you in the middle of those things. Friends, you can be transformed by the blessed life of Jesus, the kingdom of God, right here, right now. Praise the Lord. One of my favorite names to call Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us now. He is greater than any of the things that we face. The reward of being blessed now, and then the second reward is this, receiving the crown of life in the future. And I think it's an important reward to look at and to hold on to. And I want you to know if you're in Christ today, it's for us. You know, we all often talk about what are you looking forward to? We say that to each other all the time. Right? So what are you looking forward to, for example, of Thanksgiving? It's like pumpkin pie. <laughs> right? I'm looking forward to that. Big dollop of cool lip on top. Oh, yeah. A few hours, pumpkin pie. <laughs> What are you looking forward to? See, I think James is saying, look forward to the crown of life. What's the significance of the crown? Well, a crown is connected to royalty. And here it's related to the Lord, like he associates it with the Lord and, and eternal life, the divine life, the God life. And that's amazing what he's talking about, this little phrase, this little crown of life. It's so much. And I don't know about you, but when I read it, I think about the Olympics and the, and the medal podium. And so often when I see people winning their, their medals, I get deeply emotional as the anthem's playing. Because I know how much that moment represents all of the trials, all of the training, all of the days, all of the sweat, blood, and tears. And something deep inside of me is like, oh, yeah. And I want you to know that God, I think, has put that in each of us. That there's a day coming when life is over that he's going to put something on us as a reward. And it's good, it's good to long for that day. The Bible talks about crown of righteousness or crown of glory or the victor's crown. So what if here, James is actually talking about a future orientation so that we have hope that we're actually going to stand to be rewarded by God on the podium of heaven. That's actually going to happen. And what if James is looking ahead to the day of the Lord here? It's one little phrase, but so significant. You see, one day Jesus is coming again to the earth. He will be the high king of heaven. And this crown actually points to the reality that if we're in Christ, we're going to rule with him. He's still the Lord, but we're going to rule with him. So I need you to use your imaginations here with me. The kingdom of God, what that's, what's that going to be like in the future? Because it can inspire our strength and our hope today. The scriptures tell us that there will be a new heavens and a new earth. And that people will be resurrected. Now, now think about a big picture here. You see, the power of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus touches absolutely everything. That the whole cosmos itself will be resurrected and made new. When you stand and look out at the stars at, the, at night, those things out there, they're going to be resurrected. That's amazing. The whole cosmos resurrected. The universe itself renewed and made new. And heaven is a really good place, but the scriptures say that there's going to be a new heavens. What's that going to be like? And there's going to be a resurrected new earth. So think about the most breathtaking thing you can right now about the earth. Whatever that is, it's just dust and shadows compared to to what's coming. And we're going to get resurrected new bodies. That's amazing. Right? We're looking forward to new bodies where the aches and the pains and the degradation goes away. Right? Maybe some flowy resurrected hair. Yeah. Come on. It's going to be flowing mane. Can't wait. I don't know what it's going to be. It's resurrected hair. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> but like, let's imagine this. 
No more carrying around the suffering and the darkness and the stress and the wasting away of this life. Can you imagine that today? Resurrected new bodies. You see, there's going to be new jobs, new roles, new activities, new adventures in the kingdom of God where we, under the high king of heaven, rule over, the scriptures actually say, rule over angels. And then we're going to be entrusted to roles of ruling over angels and and entrusted to roles in the new heavens and the new earth. And Pastor Al and I were sitting in my office kind of talking about this point, and he was like, what if the trials and the testing that we go through now is actually preparing us for those roles? Have you ever thought about that? I'm like, hey, that's good. I'm going to put it in my sermon. He's like, that sounds great. (laughs) Friends, there are adventures in the new heavens and the new earth. And we will live that out in our resurrected bodies. And there will be no more, there will be no end to it. What could that be like? So if this is true... Shouldn't it consume our thoughts? Shouldn't we look forward to this? And I think that's the invitation that James is giving us here. If this is true, shouldn't it just draw us forward? And I love that phrase from that old hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, bright hope for tomorrow. Bright hope, friends. There's a dawn coming that will never end, praise God. Listen to this from Revelation chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations." Man, verse 3 just gets, no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light, listen to this, or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever. Verse 12, the words of Jesus, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Friends, we're meant, made to, Soak in that, anticipate that, look forward to that, treasure that, be motivated by that. And maybe you're sitting here and you're like, uh, can't you be too focused on heaven? I'm like, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. And, and here's the moment for my obligatory C.S. Lewis reference. <laughs> Pastor Rob teased about that last week, but it fits really well. Listen to this. If you read history, you'll find the Christians who did the most for the present world were just those who thought most of the next. It's since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this. Aim at heaven, and you'll get earth thrown in. Aim at earth, and you will get neither. I think that's very fitting. Do you hope in your future in Christ so that it motivates you to keep going today? That's what James is inviting us to. And my last point is this, that we can have confidence in our rewarder. We can have confidence that this stuff, this blessedness and this crown of life is going to happen because of the pure and perfect character of God. You see, our God, he redeems the now and he rules the future. He gives lasting rewards for our perseverance and his character is totally perfect. And we can trust him. And you and I, we can experience strength for today and a bright hope for tomorrow through the rewards that God gives. His kingdom has come and it is coming 
And yes, we live in this in-between time, but we can call on him. The strength of these rewards is God himself in the now and in the future. He's calling us blessed now. That's our identity in him. And he will give out rewards for the life we've lived. And I think we're meant to set our minds on the rewards of Jesus for strength and hope that we will be rewarded by him. And so it makes me think of a story as we close here. Uh, I remember being, uh, been a pastor for a while and there was a season in pastoral ministry, uh, early days where I just felt like nothing was adding up, felt like everything I was doing was like dust in the wind. I felt sad, I felt alone, felt like nothing was going well, there was conflict all around. And I was just like, God, I don't know, I don't know if I can keep going here. And, and then that Sunday, or right around that time, uh, our worship team got up to sing a song um, from Psalm 62, and there's a line in there that says, the seeds of hope, uh, the fields of hope in which I sow are harvested in heaven. And that, for whatever reason, just, it just breathed fresh life into me that day. And so I want to invite the worship team back now, and we're going to sing that song together uh, to close the service. So I want to invite you to stand. And uh, this is one of my favorite songs, and I hope uh, the Lord blesses you as we sing it together now.